there, it's Anastasia Forrest coming at you live. Um, I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. Um, so I was thinking this would be an awesome way to um, not only do something a little different and try to engage a little bit, but also um, help me get back into something I was interested in and um, something that was helping me think more about like how to build um, the, our business, um, Forest Team and how to brand ourselves and stuff like that. I was actually reading a book um, and I haven't picked it up in a while, but um, it's called The Hero and the Outlaw and it's written by Margaret Mark and Carol S. Peterson. I know this is backwards for you guys, so don't worry. Anything I'm gonna talk about, I'm just gonna read to you. <laughs> so um, I was actually getting ready this morning and I'm starting to like use more products myself and, um, and also sometimes, I'm sure you guys do this too, like if I'm in the shower or just in the bathroom, I'll like pick up products, especially since I have like live with a guy. And I'm just curious now as I'm thinking about things, um, I think more about branding and stuff like that. I'm curious. So I like read these, um, these products, I read what they say and I try to think about like what the, um, marketing team was going for, you know, and it's fun to like think about it in terms of archetypes. So I was, uh, I was reading this one today and I thought this would be a fun one to start and make a video about and you know see how it goes and there's a ton of other ones we could do so I'll just kind of this will be like a trial run all right so this is something that is my husband's um, but I use it as well um, so um, yeah it's called Boogie's True Hair Fiber and it's made by um, it's put out by Dollar Shave Club so we're gonna keep that in mind um, if you've seen their ad the famous one um, with with that's one single shot with the one guy walking through the um, like the manufacturing place, you can kind of get an idea of where this is headed. Um, but basically, this says right here it says adds fullness and adjustable, malleable texture to short to medium length hair. Create a mold just so you can break it. All right, so we're gonna go with that. Um, Keep that in mind, and also this true hair fiber, even the title of what this is. And it says, find a simple true. All right, so now we're gonna go to the book, and out of all the archetypes in here, I think the main one that the uh, marketers are working to appeal to, whether subconsciously or consciously, is gonna be the outlaw. And the motto of the outlaw is, rules are meant to be broken. So that makes sense with this whole create a mold just so you can break it. All right, now these authors group uh, the outlaw into um, a, basically their category is leaving a thumbprint on the world. They group them with the hero, the outlaw, and the magician. So in general, this kind of archetype is a, it provides a structure that can release the ability of ordinary people to rise to challenges, take risks, break rules, and transform their lives. They help them develop the quality of mastery, requiring them to embrace risk and change, which can trigger an inner conflict with the need for safety, structure, and security. They are each in their own way magnetic because they are about change with all of its accompanying anxiety and acceleration. So that makes a lot of sense, you know, with the whole idea about um, appealing to the idea of like breaking the status quo or reforming society in a positive way. And it, it makes sense that that would be a trait um, that would be kind of marketed to men because in general like that kind of like disrupted like shaking things up energy I guess in a certain way that's something that men you know might appeal to men um, not to be sexist or anything but I, I you know things are marketed differently to men than women um, so and this also I thought was relevant this paragraph here it says changing times require people who are energized by risk and who want to prove their own capacities through rising to challenge after challenge. The ability to take risks and to persevere to the point that we really accomplish something of consequence results in high self-esteem and social validation. When these archetypes are active in people, they want to take action and have an impact on the world. So of course, um, these, these um, paragraphs that I'm highlighting are focusing on the um, positive aspects of the archetype. There is a shadow side, um, but obviously any kind of good marketing company is gonna appeal to like the positive side. Um, most people don't want to consciously be like, yeah, I wanna like ruin 
like disrupt the whole world and be take over and be crazy. Most people, you know, the positive aspect of changing things for the better and things like that makes more sense, right? So um, we're gonna go into the chapter of the outlaw, which is the one I really, like I said, I think this one is using. Um, so the outlaw has the enticement of forbidden fruit, right? Rules are meant to be broken. Um, we see the outlaw in its most positive form figures and in figures like Robin Hood or Zorro, um, which, you know, are, makes sense that for this being marketed to a man, you know, those are two men that, you know, are, are stars of the show. They find their identity outside the current social structure. They're faithful to deeper, truer values, again, with the true, true hair fiber. Um, they are romantic figures ready to disrupt a society that has succumbed to tyranny, repression, conformity, or cynicism. So I think all of that makes sense um, in building this case for uh, this product being an outlaw uh, archetype, well, appealing to the ar outlaw archetype and being marketed to that um, trait. And so there's one, a couple more things I wanted to highlight that I thought were interesting. Okay, I would think, I think Dollar Shave Club, I think of this um, target age group probably being uh, people who are in their men, who are in their um, maybe like 20s to 30s. That's kind of what I think of the target age group being, especially when I think about their commercial. Um, and it's kind of edgy, you know, it's kind of like shaking things up, taking a risk, um, that kind of thing. I think this is for like men in their 20s to 30s, maybe, maybe 40s. Um, so this, so it does, there's a paragraph here about young people. Most young people feel a bit alienated from the culture simply because the develop, their developmental task is to find themselves. If this is minor, they'll identify with the explorer, which is a different archetype. If it is not so minor, they will identify as outlaws or at least rebels. The word rebel in our society is used in an ambiguous way that can carry either archetype. So... And then and, and this brings back to the like the age 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, in a more everyday way, responsible, hardworking people may also be attracted to outlaw archetype brands. Um, not because they will ever disrupt anything or shock anyone, but as a way of letting off steam. Um, so when we're buying a product, we're not just buying like the hair fiber, you know, you're buying the identity, the, what it does for your identity, you know? So it's interesting. It's just, I think it's so interesting. So hopefully this is interesting for you. If you have any like ideas or like thoughts about this, I'd love to hear it. So please definitely comment. Um, and I think it'd be fun to maybe do this with some other products too. Um, so I, in particularly there's a section on the lighthearted outlaw. And I think this Dollar Shave Club in general and this particular product, it definitely appeals to the lighthearted outlaw because it's kind of, um, like fun um while you know suggesting create a mold just so you can break it like it's kind of like fun and creative um but shaking things up at the same time so the outlaw um can be pictured as technologically technologically and spiritually ahead of us and therefore here to provide rescue from our own self-destructive impulses and so just one more example of a brand that uses the outlaw archetype um, and maybe a couple others, but definitely that one is actually Apple. And Sean and I watched uh, the movie Jobs the other night with Ashton Kutcher. That's about Steve Jobs and how he started Apple as um, out of his garage and stuff like that. And just his whole, what he brought to the company when he was part of it, you know, he was part of it. Then he kind of like got kicked out and then he came back and what he did and how he marketed them and, and just the spirit of it is definitely in line with that outlaw archetype. Um, even the logo of the apple with a bite out of it is sort of suggesting that crossover to the um, rebel dimension. So, um, you know, and the whole like logo think different suggests in the running pictures of iconoclastic creative geniuses in, in all different fields like Einstein, um, Amelia Earhart, uh, Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, Yoko Ono. You know, it's, it, Apple is known for technological innovation and, and revolutionary stuff, you know, making um, the software user friendly. And so it's like almost anyone can become an expert um, using the computers. It's just very intuitive. 
So the sole of the Apple brand is also, has some of that outlaw going on for sure. Well, I hope that was interesting. Um, and I will, if this goes well, I'll do it again. I thought it was cool and it's also helping me get more excited about thinking about branding and um, it'll help me get better at this stuff. So thanks guys. I hope uh, that was good. Talk to you later. Bye.